Dan Tokar at the Willow Forge in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Lizina, the warrior kitten, who has been helping me this afternoon as I make the video. She is very helpful. She tells me all the things I am doing wrong, like any good girl. But today, on a blacksmith's dictionary, I am going to show you how to make an upset square corner, and even to put it in the place you want it to be. All right, as with anything, um, you generally need to have a square corner in a specific location. Just making a randomly positioned square doesn't really help you. Um, and you don't want to be like those guys who put a bend in the middle of a piece of stock and then cut off both ends to fit. Uh, one of the things you want to work at is the skill where you can actually uh, put things where you want it without a lot of waste in time or material. So I've got a four foot long bar here and uh, the first type of square corner I'm going to do is an upset square corner and it's important that the end of the rod be square because where you hammer on it, if it's not square, uh, it'll deflect and you'll end up bending uh, instead of upsetting. So I have cut this off reasonably square. It'll vibrate in the file in the device. Alright, so I have a reasonably square rod on that end, and I know where I want to put this square. I want to put this square corner at 12 inches, so I'm going to mark where my 12 inch, that's where the heat needs to be. I want to center the heat there. But the problem is, is that when you're upsetting it in the vise, you won't be able to see that mark because uh, it'll disappear in the fire. Uh, so what you do is you put that in the correct place, which should be about an inch or so from the edge of the vise. And you mark on the bar and on the vise with a piece of chalk or soapstone or whatever you have. Put a mark there, and that'll be your index mark, your witness mark. So when you pull this out of the fire, and this is a nice bright yellow, you can line up the chalk mark and know that you're holding it in the right place. Numbers, that's how you make all this. So, just so you see that, there are two marks. This is the mark that's on the vise, so that I can get it in the right place. I'll put it in the fire. This is a piece of half inch square, so it won't take long to get it up to temperature. Um, it's easier to upset things at a bright orange, not quite a welding temperature. You don't need to get it bright yellow, uh, a bright orange. It's always hard to judge temperatures from uh, what you see on the camera because no matter what combination of filters I put on, I can never get the exact color that I see when I'm working. Uh, there's always a certain amount of uh, color shift. Typically, things look brighter and yellower uh, on my camera than they do in real life. So if you mentally deduct about 100 or so degrees from what you see, you're probably on the right ballpark. Note is, is that I'm rotating it in the fire every now and then because you can get uneven heating and uh, just makes a mess out of your upset because uh, the hot side wants to bend more or upset more than the cool side and you can end up with things bending up rather than upsetting. All right. So. Below, I put this chalk mark witness mark, 
try and keep all of this stuff straight. Blow this so I don't get too hot. Like. Still, it bends up a little bit. I end up with a little bit of a hump. But then, I straighten it on the anvil by tapping it lightly. I don't want to reduce the thickened part that I've made up. And I will have to set this a couple of times, a couple of beats, to get enough of an upset. If you want to have a decent amount of material in your upset. So the first upset, you don't really notice it that much. the witness marks in alignment, put it in the vise. You can see it's got a fair amount of upset in it now. Now I could probably make that work, but 
I want insurance. I want to make absolutely sure that I have enough material to make a nice square corner. So I'm going to heat that up and upset it a third time. We want a beautiful upset corner. Anybody can make an ugly corner. We want beautiful corners. might not be in the corners that much. Alright, I rotate the rod every now and then to try and keep the heat even. I don't honestly know if it really makes that much of a difference, but it helps. If for no other reason then I have more confidence in it than if I don't rotate it. There's a certain amount of work in the forage that you do just out of habit without really knowing if it really does make a difference or not. But you do it because you've done it before and it works. Knowing with what works. stuff in the vise, try and keep it nice and straight. This isolates the heat. And I it. And I'm not using really heavy blows because I'm trying to drive it not out of the vise, just on itself. Now that gave me a nice upset thick part in the middle there now. I'm going to reheat that and straighten it out. Upsetting in general is one of the more difficult things a blacksmith has to learn how to do. I think that's why being upset is sort of synony synonymous with uh, being frustrated or uh, not being able to get things right. Uh, and I'm not really sure whether uh, the term came from blacksmithing or not, but uh, an upsetting experience. Anybody who's tried to upset enough pieces of metal can tell you uh, but sometimes it does not go the way you want it to. But anyway, so I've heated that up and I'm just going to gently straighten it. You're not trying to change the shape, you're just trying to straighten it out. That's why I'm trying to center it as I go. You want upset part to be centered in the bar, the rest of the bar to be straight on either side of the upset. So I will show you up close. You can see how much bigger the upset part is than the parent stock. I haven't measured this, but we'll see. Maybe we will measure it. Get out our aluminum rule and say that yes, this is half inch stock, and I have upset this into 5 eighths inch, a little less than 5 eighths inch on the other dimension. So 5 eighths inch, give or take a little allowance in the thickest part of that. That may not sound like a lot, uh, but it pays to remember that uh, the difference between a actual square corner and just a bent square corner is probably about 15 percent in terms of the material. Now I have said a couple of times so far that what we want is to have a square corner that's in a specific location. So 
in order to do a specific location, I am going to measure my 12 inches and say that that's where the outside of the bend should be, which means the actual place, because you have a half an inch allowance for the thickness of the, the metal, that is really where you want the inside of the bend to be at 11 and a half inches to get it to be uh, 12 inches along that side. All right, and it's the same problem. We are going to be bending this in a vise, but we have to heat that up so that mark will not survive. So what we're going to do is erase our prior mark, at least on the bar. bit of water maybe. Yes, we erase, erase our prior mark and we're going to take that mark and say that's where I want this to bend in the vise and I will use the same witness mark but make a new witness mark on the bar so that I can get that to be in exactly the right location where I wish to bend it. Remember, Anybody can make a bend at random. It takes a little bit of knowledge and skill to put a right angle bend in the right location, not just some random spot on the bar. Remember, we are highly skilled craftsmen. We want our work to look like it was done by human beings and not painfully gnawed out by mice. So anyway, I'm going to put it in the vise and make the beginning bend. Because it's thicker in the location where the upset part is, um, you won't really be able to close the vise in the normal way. Um, it'll actually be sort of hung up and you don't want to make a um, true tight 90 degree bend uh, in the first heat because you want to leave a radius on the inside corner so you don't get a shunt, uh, a closed in tight corner uh, that can be a stress riser, or a crack. Um, one of the reasons you have fillets when you have uh, uh, gussets and, and corners welded when you uh, weld big pieces of steel together is so you don't have a stress riser. So just like you have a radius uh, or a fillet uh, uh, on a uh, right angle gusset in welding, you don't want to have an absolutely sharp inside corner uh, on even an upset forged bar because you can get a stress riser or a crack there or you can accidentally close it up uh, drive it past itself and make a shunt, uh, actually have a fold that forms in there that uh, is also a stress riser. You don't want to make a weak spot in your nice square part. All right. I'm even going to use the wire brush because I want my work to be neat so I won't get hit by all the little pieces of scale that come off. All right, there's my witness mark. Line it up in the vise. Don't want to squeeze it tight, tight, because you'd squeeze the uh, upset out. If you've made the upset hot enough, Remember, it might be a little thicker, so it doesn't want to actually bend at the upset. But if you've made it the hottest part, all right, so I have a sort of radius bend where the thickness is, and I'm going to straighten the one leg out a little bit. Being neat counts on this. And now that I have the upset part, the upset part near that corner, I am going to tighten the corner 
heating up just the part I want to move. to retain the radius in the inside and then I will drive this down to being force it down to being the same thickness as the rest of the bar which takes that material and drives it out toward the corner and I still have my nice little radius on the inside the next move is to put it in the vise and tap the corners square to drive that material into the corner. So I'll have to move the camera. Okay, I've moved the camera so you can see what's going to happen in the vise. Uh, I'm heating just the corner up, and I'm going to use a one pound ball peen hammer and drive the corner close to the square. Put both legs, both legs of the corner in the vise, and thing at this point is that that corner is still massive enough so that I can forge the corner square and there is still an inside radius so the next part will be forged on the anvil
So you can see we're sneaking up on a nice square upset corner. This hot my brush. I'm going to put it back in the vise and try and get that last little bit squared up. So we'll move the camera. And you'll notice that we are still at a slightly more than 90 degree angle and we have not put a crease in that corner yet. So the last heat will be to straighten all of these things out in the vise. things in the vise so that the solid part, the part that's going to be hit, is on the standing part of the vise and not the uh the moving jaws of the vise. closer and I will heat it up and put it on the anvil for the last little bit. 
depends on how much of a fuss budget, how much of an obsessive compulsive person you are, how much of a neatness freak. You can keep playing with these right angles for a long time to make them perfect. And this one, to be honest, has taken me about three times longer than the average one I would do just because I am showing you how to do it. So I'm going slower and I am being much more careful. Because I'm sure there's somebody out there that has a square that they're going to put up against their screen to show that my square isn't square. All right, so what I'm going to do is is too long, the floor is too close. You want everything to be straight and square and exactly exactly the same dimension. You don't want the corner to be fatter or smaller than the rest of the bar. Oh, I still have to take that little bit Again, I am being very obsessive compulsive about this at this point. All right, so there it is. That's an upset square corner. And I would get out my framing square and check it to see if it needs to be fixed. Here is my framing square. And again, this gets into how compulsive you want to be about this. Yes, it's not quite square. You have to bring it in just a tiny little bit. All right, so I will adjust this thing to be square.
All right. Okay, I've got a little wiggle in the stock, but it's basically square. An upset square corner. <laughs> 